in between M80 and Glazers today? It's like it's like when in Tier 1 Sentinels play, and it doesn't matter who they play. It's a big match because it's Sentinels. That's, That's true. how it is for M80 here. <laughs> I, I could actually <laughs> agree with that. I could actually agree with that. But uh, jokes aside, I still think uh, I, I will continue to move with the Copium. Although I, I, I do predict that M80 is going to win this series. I think that are still going to struggle to win these maps because M80, yes, we talked about wow. Glazers having close victory or close defeats against their teammate or against their opponent, sorry, in the past two weeks. But M80 didn't have also the cleanest of victories in this 4-0 undefeated map pool that we're talking about, right? We talked about at the beginning of the of the show that M80 uh, was brought to the distance against TSM on Lotus, where it, it went down to the last round. But then against Sad Esports, for example, even they tweeted out on uh, after their game of like, oh, we actually weren't expecting the amount of util and the type of composition that was going to come out of Sad Esports uh, on Ascent. Yet they still won it. Yes, 13 to 10. But Sad Esports looked very good on uh, on their defensive side uh, with that composition that that they pulled out. So it's it wasn't easy victories. Uh, M80 are the only undefeated team because uh, Voice actually dropped a map uh, against Oxygen. So I'm, it's a big match because I wonder if M80 could truly be perfect. Isn't that what we all strive for? But no. I don't think it's going to be easy against the Glazers, especially you, Vans. You have a lot of copium for the boys of Glazer, the boys on Glazers. And yeah. they bring a really unique composition that I wonder if M80 are, are studied up on. Yeah, I mean, like it's uh, what some Euro on Bind. Uh, I think there was like some Master or something like that too on on Split, if I'm not mistaken, which is not that unorthodox. But uh, mm -hmm. yes, maybe bring a Euro on Bind could have been something that's like, oh crap, this is actually new that we have to adapt on the fly. But this actually has been used uh, quite a little bit more during the beginning of the year and even during kickoff uh, as, as Sentinels and other teams are also bringing out Yoru on, on that map. Uh, so it, it starts to get a little bit more figured out of how you're playing against a Yoru or how a Yoru brings a lot of value into uh, a bind map. But then again, it could also just be a simple, we're just going to bend that map. <laughs> and then and then we just see M80 play a different map, right? Because even then, despite their 4-0, their map pool, we haven't not, had a chance to see too much of their map pool either and i think that's also the beauty as to why m80 is undefeated so far this season is that yeah. they they we haven't they haven't played any off-season games they haven't played any off-season tournaments uh they they built this roster or brought in bcj almost last minute at this point and are trying to i'd like to say figure out their map pool so a lot of that has to now be basically what's what Win winthrop university was doing that previous game is to try to apply everything that they've been practicing in the scrims and try to see if it works in the server and sometimes it works and sometimes it works a little bit less well because of these or, close games that they won against TSM and and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and Sad Esports. And there, there's things obviously that don't work out at all. But for M80, yeah. <laughs> everything that they've done has been working out, so yes. it has to feel good. The 2-0-2-0 victories, mm -hmm. and one of the reasons why they're taking these 2-0 victories is their icebox. Their icebox has been insane. They're bringing their own twist to this map, bringing the, their own kind of flavor to it when it comes to the compositions. And just every single time that you see them on icebox, it's been clean. We don't know what the map map pool was gonna look like today, but. Uh, unless it is going to be the Glaciers banning the icebox, you can expect an, an, an M80 domination on this map, Lemon. Yes, and what I'm so scared about is that M80 got to pick this map. Where is the ban? Icebox should have been the first ban. Icebox uh, for M80. They won this 13 to 6 against TSM and 13 to 6 against SAD, which are two, I would say, number two, number three, wh whatever you want to argue, uh, some of the best teams in this group. And offensive stats is what is crazy to me a 93% win rate on Icebox offense. M80 have only dropped like one round when it comes to offense. Oh, they're 13 and 1 on offensive round wins. So you really got to try and take down M80 on their defense to hope to have a chance. And I believe that's our first map. So it's it's a tone setter. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna see how that's gonna look because it's it's more than the maps, right? We talked about the icebox being really good and mm. playing twice already, getting those wins, playing a little bit more for M80. Uh, but now for the side of the Glaciers, I I feel like there is an opportunity individually to get those round wins. It, when you think of an M80, you already think of them as such a, a set established team. But as Vans, you were saying, this is a team that's still trying to figure it out, and same as for the Glaciers, every time. 
time we get to see them, there's some sort of evolution that, that's been done. That's right. Evolution of what the Glazers are also bringing map to map too, right? So like if one week it doesn't work out on a certain comp that they're doing, let's say on Sunset, they'll bring on something different again and maybe a different comp at the same time. But they they actually also had to battle in, in the pits of it and try to figure out how their opponents play against them too. And they were doing pretty good to adapt on the fly as well. And when you're looking at a team like the Glazers, for example, it's just a donut as a logo. You see a lot of players that are like free agent <laughs> and you're just thinking that once you're at the challengers and you're not signed at that moment, you're just kind of like plugging it out as you go. But there's definitely a lot of thought behind what they're currently doing here for for Glazers, which is why you're seeing such these such close you know, losses against uh, mm -hmm. teams like Turtle Troop, who also should have been a right. team last year, technically, that could have been signed by, you know, rumored, uh, allegedly, uh, by XQC, for example, you know? So, so at you that point, that, there's... Man. What? <laughs> what? I'm just... I'm, what, I, I can't start rumor mills? I'm just, I'm just a Redditor at this point. What's bro waffling about? Can I, uh, can I have just rumor mill like everybody else? I don't have proof. Source, trust no. me, bro. I'm just following what everybody's saying. <laughs> What's up, Reddit? But uh, the evolution of the Glazers is what I'm really excited to see, especially Zachary, because I've known him like personally for a really mm -hmm. long time. Like when he began his esports e uh, career in another title at like 13 or 14 years old, this guy is used to being a champion, uh, to being at the very top and being one of the most talented players in the scene. And now he's kind of rebuilding and, and still building up his career in Valorant and helping kind of produce wins out of Glazers. And the Glazers have gone really close against tough teams. Mm -hmm. And they're probably one of the most underrated teams here. But going up against uh, M80, who are number one in their group, it is a tough task. But Zachary, even if they're losing, he's the one who pulls out all the top performances. And he brings out Yoru in kind of a, a different look to what the meta is. And we're going to see how that's going to shape up. We, we talked about the Icebox. We talked about M80, the Glacers, just a little bit. But let's go into the agent select or the map select to see mm -hmm. how those are, are shaping up and what maps we're going to be seeing. And we talked about the Icebox so much. And guess what? It's going to be that first map. You can't escape. You can't avoid it. Icebox first, then Split, and then Breeze Vans. Uh, we talked about the Icebox already, but give me your thoughts on Split and yeah. the, the potential of going to Breeze. So, so in the end, too, you, you also see that M80 just banned buying, right? So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter about these interesting comps that Glazers are trying to bring out from map to map. They're just going to go into like, okay, we'll split. We could always have confidence in what Nismo could do. Like we always praise Nismo as a as a sleeper pick as being such a good KO, but he's actually an insanely good raise at that point as well. So yes. we haven't had a chance to see M80 on split yet. But knowing Nismo, this could still be a very hard map for the Glazers to try to win against them. So this could very well be a series that continues to go 2-0 at this point. The, the name of the game at this point is that hopefully they, they put some, some effort and some homework in the Glazers to see how Icebox is played by M80, how they scale on the map with um, these these mosh pits to scale up on the east site, um, and then how they play the pulse plants, because as you saw from those stats, they're just 100% win rate in terms of pulse plant situations on the attack. So what's the game plan coming in from Glazers onto that one, right? So that's that's the bigger question now. The, wi the yeah. winning condition is Icebox. The bigger question is, who the heck picks Split? Okay, this is like my least favorite map, but the Glazers, they picked what? this here. It's not about you. Also, it's not about you, Lemon Kiwi. Who cares? But, okay, <laughs> not a lot of people like Splits, I gotta I say. Like split. Buy and split I like split. We are on the maps. desk. Yeah. We're on the desk. <laughs> That's why. Okay. But okay. they picked this against TSM and went 13-9 pretty close off of the sky. And um, I, we go to Breeze. I'm favoring. Uh, I know it's hard to favor anyone but M80. But this is a map <laughs> that uh, the Glazer would be comfortable on after what we just saw from Yoru on Breeze. And I think yeah. Zachary would love to go to Breeze if it gets to that point. I don't think they'd love to go to map three. But in that case, Breeze would be fine. Yeah. And I, and I do want to address a little bit of the elephant in the room is that we're talking so much about M80, potentially them going 2-0, going 3-0 in the overall standings and the <laughs> matches that they've won. But the and truth is, on maps. the other side, for the Glazers, it can be the opposite. It can be the the team that, that joins Thinking Man on the 0 and 3 at the bottom of the group. So that is something as well to worry about. That is something to be concerned about for, for multiple reasons, right? Not, not only for the standings, with the limited amount of, of weeks that we have we have week four and week five, but also to, to stay in challengers, to continue. So there's a lot that you have to be worried about, Vans, when it comes yeah. to the Glazers doing good today. Two things, actually three things in terms of copium into what you're mentioning. Yeah, going 0-3, right? So the first one is 
it, they still had close losses, just like Thinking Man, for example. Thinking Man, to, to be honest, should have won that series against MXS yesterday. And they kind of like threw that one on, on Bind and you saw the rest of the story there where they actually lost. But it could be a very similar thing like Crew, for example, of last year at the VCTs. You could go 0-9, cool. yet still go a run in the LCQ, which pretty much is the same formula at this point, right? Because if you go 0-5 at this point, you're going to go into relegations. Relegations, you have a double elimination bracket in that as well. And then go into the mid-season cup and then do a run after that because you still have a chance to go back into the mid-season cup uh, if you're able to qualify through relegation, right? So you could have that, uh, that crew run and still have great results. Because again, if you're looking at, let's just talk about Glazers now at this point, they've lost some yeah. games where it was in overtime, a three-map series against TTR. Um, you still as the storyline is mentioned by Lemon Q, he's still a, a great player and a great leader in terms of Zachary that was kind of like over, over shun, like uh, overshadowed rather by Baby Bay, for example, when he played in phase or by Calm when he was in a crew, right? There was always one player that we were talking about more and he's kind of like the silent pick. He's like, for me, the the Nismo of the Glazers pretty much at that point where he could actually do great roles on Sentinels, could do great roles on uh, even our Yoru at that point. So he's he's an all rounder that really helps uh, the Glazers bring that that type of like uh, good strong mentality going into these games where they could actually make this very difficult for M80 to win. Uh, although it is it is a tough ask for today. And I think to be fair, it's an M80 that they're undefeated when it comes to maps, but obviously they, they can bleed a little bit. They, they can lose a couple exactly. of those rounds. They can lose the advantage. But the, the question is, how is going to how is the Glazers going to allow that to happen? How are they going to create those opportunities? And like you guys mentioned, Zachary is a perfect opportunity, a little bit of the unsung hero for what the success mm -hmm. has been for the Glazers in, in the couple rounds and the, the couple successes that we've seen from them. But it, it's gonna be so much more m80 is already a set team last year their competition was the guard it was the guard is always on top then yep. m80 they're kind of close but the guard is always the best what? the guard gone no longer competition <laughs> now you only have m80 so the pressure honestly is always on them to perform to that level it, it, even the story of last year though it was actually all about m80 then the guard right because m80 was the team to beat at that point where once you actually got yeah. into the ascension playoffs and it was the grand finals between m80 and the guard that's where it mattered the most and unfortunately m80 slipped but if you're looking at their season it was pretty much perfect at that point last year so there's yes i do agree with you they're their team to beat this year because they're also the team to beat last year and they haven't gone through too many changes but the players that they brought in are still great players so they're still the team to beat this year and they're still very very strong and for teams like them, M80, there's always that question, when is it going to be their time? Because this year is looking like it is their time, their year, to go through everything, to go to Ascension. But again, step by step, take it little by little as we go now into the agent select of this map of Icebox. Again, a very good map for M80. We do expect to continue to see the, this Gecko composition, this Gecko played by BCJ. And on the other side, Lemon, you get to see the Glazers running this No Duelist composition and, and relying a little bit more and Zachary on this Kildre, which is interesting very flexible player as well but it's <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting duel I'm gonna leave you guys to it hey guys it's lemon and lemon here because when triad says lemon bans talks that's all he does is yeah <laughs> wait hello <laughs> You better not, dude. You have a snowstorm. You, you gave me a heart attack. No, okay? man. It, it I was, was not only a about snowstorm in the afternoon. This. It's all hot now. It's all it's, it's getting warmer here in Montreal. Uh, Everything's warming. good from here. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I, I think Actually, no, it's not global really... warming. It's just spring. <laughs> Uh, it is April. So that's so true. But yeah, I mean, uh, Dryad brought out the, uh, the talked about the Gecko KO combo. M80 have these really explosive entries. Their offense has a 94% win rate. Glazers got to hope that they find a weakness in M80's defense and Glazers go back to their standard comp. Yeah, Glazer's standard comp on, on Icebox is actually quite nice to see as well. I think the, the Omen is something that we that we're starting to see more and more with certain teams and that still brings great value into the composition where you could actually stall a lot better in in this a side on defense on the attack it's uh, the, the same type of thing you're you're trying to deny visibility on early type of pushes into pipes 
although it also denies your own type of visibility trying to scale towards this a site so you're going to try to default a little bit more uh in this type of composition in my opinion here with with what the glazers bring to the table uh this time around so if you're defaulting more is amy going to try to play a little bit more aggressively where they could just easily take orb control or something towards the a and b site right but that's going to be uh, the name of the game at this point. TG starting off right now on uh, the attack side. And also the beauty of playing this double controller is that you're always going to be able to have Ange putting up this default role on the B site. That's just regular conditioning that you'll see here on that side, which is why I'm eating is also running double controller, by the way, and uh, an Omen uh, onto Koala Noob. And the Glazers, I think there's a lot of hope, a lot of expectations behind them. How can how close can they be to M80? Because M80 are a beatable team. Yes, Icebox favors them a lot, but the Glazers have a lot of tape to study. Now, the journey takes us to A with BCJ, who's maybe trying to fight for the ore, but the Glazers make their way slowly, but surely, and it's behind the push of Zachary and down below Drone. The Glazers even taken the rope and there's so much smoke to get through and M80 are starting to pick them apart. It's already two from BCJ playing this back corner there with the ghost and the Glazers, a suit, they got their, gotta get their timing right on how they cross these walls because they're getting picked apart by m80 on entry the glazers also took some damage we're able to put damage into nitro and bcj but m80 get to play back sight and man m80 haven't lost a single person yet it could be an early flawless and you'll get it does any flawless to come through and you saw the strength once again of this omen not necessarily only putting the smoke onto pipes on the attack uh, or even on defense, rather. Uh, but you can also use that to also use the one-way on the top of 410. So you have players now running through decay of a, a Viper Wall that comes up from Xander. Then they see nothing when they're crossing over to Jenny, which makes it a lot easier for the players on screens to try to fight back against just regular pop shots and sprays uh, from the screens so over at that area. So that's something that's going to be very important and a responsibility for Rico to do, uh, because this conditioning wall on TG is always going to be towards B, unless they do the screen wall from time to time but overall it, it's going to be the name of the game the Ooh. controllers right now especially koala noob at this point too with the l login in this pick it's still a very important role in this composition for both of these teams on this omen yeah just an unfortunate peak out of the glazes especially when you heard, heard the orb getting tapped by m80 maybe you expect only bcj to do that as he did that last round but m80 brought friends and now the glazers have to play a man down. They've abandoned the A site. M80 reestablished their smokes there and also around mid. Some shots being put by BCJ over at the B site as the Glazers now ready to storm in, being aggressive, but holding yellow box is still BCJ. Yeah. This is still very smart. I respect it from TG. Despite them all getting killed here once this orb comes down, is they didn't try to use the owl drone out of position. They wanted to save that use for later on. And there you go. Easy kills. Flights will pop out here for Nismo is, like I said, he's, he's an awesome KO. But but to get back to it, right, TG, they they went into, okay, we were, we were already a man down. What can we actually maximize in this round? We could leverage now our opponent's Viper Orb to just pick up the B ult or on our end to try to farm that up so we could scale that a little bit more uh, in the later rounds and secondly just try to do the standard swing on players and hopefully get some kills with classics if you could trade but if not you're saving better util for precision on this silva in this round right here when you have the rifles to work with just so many options of blinds out of m80 that and they seem so cohesive that is why they're the number one team that is why they're fighting for the crown to be the perfect team in challengers who have not dropped a map now and it's only two rounds in in, uh, in yeah. americas of course and the glazers just playing all the way back seeing if m80 are going to play over eager but Glazers taking their time yeah and we mentioned that right the the default they're gonna have to play a little bit slower but although the way that they're playing right default and slow here for tg Standing is ahead. literally just holding spawn and one of the standard things that you have and uh, playing against a, a bonus is trying to see if they're going to try to push forward with the lower guns, mm -hmm. which you see Nismo doing right now. And he's got a guardian. Oh. Nismo and a guardian is not a lower gun. <laughs> it's a bolt action rifle <laughs> that Nismo carries in his hands. And you saw the toes out of drone, how the dogs out and M80 just keep getting lucky on getting these first picks. And the Glazers just 
Haven't had that on their side yet. Now I'm gonna start stomping through A. Use the Owl Drone spots this gecko. A BCJ on that high ground, forcing him back. And last time the Glazers did this, M80 had their backs against the wall, but they just bit back. And M80 continue to have all their members alive, holding it down on the A site as the Glazers only have three left. And maybe a shock bolt out of precision to force and put pressure on these M80 members in the back. And so far, the trades have not been too bad. Zachary flicks on to two, and the Glazers break through. Oh my god, how did they still win that round? I thought it was GG at that point. I was ready to talk about, hey, you really have to, if you have to, if you want to try to win against M80, you have to be on point of utility because that Xander kill that you just saw in front of that generator was a snake bite right in front of him that was supposed to snuff him out from that position. Although it missed, so it allowed for him to get that pick. And somehow with two players remaining, I mean, we talked about and gassed up Zachary, but Ange is another one and playing a two versus what, three or four at that point and is able to convert easy kills with perfect timing. But win that round there for TG and at least keep this game very close at the beginning of the of the half. Yeah, just not letting M80's economy get too out of hand. Now the Glazer's getting smoked off. They just have to be careful of how they enter because sometimes they just run into that line of fire of M80, but that last round proved that the Glazers, they can fight back very, very well. Now, Soba Drone kind of revealing some players there at, uh, on M80's side and maybe deciding to leave yellow Shadows box. Traveling. But Koala Noob is ready to throw Paranoia down. M80 have thrown out a fantastic blind that gave Xander a 3k in the in the second round. So the Glazers want to be able to react. And Koala Noob's basically using another outlaw this round because he's playing against small shields. They understand the the money, the econ. Nice splash though to push him away. That's where the Glazers are a little bit more ready for what M80 could throw at them. Oh, and as the smoke clears, BCJ still turns and burns onto Riku. Fantastic shot out of BCJ. Zachary fires back. The Glazers went down by one member, left. needing to feel comfortable to get the plant down still. But M80 ready to prevent it as soon as this orb drops. BCJ ready at the cut too. The Glazers dancing around. Xander comes out on top, and all of the Glazers dismantled. Look at that left column with 10 seconds left in the round for them to try to plant. You still had a sneak bite, a fragment, the mosh just got thrown. So that's the amount of util that you have right now from M80 to play even Nanoswarm on top of that already. The amount of stall that you currently have for M80 if you're not pressing them at the beginning in these early rounds. They did a perfect job for the Glazers to actually minimize the value and the impact that Koala Nuke could have on the Outlaw in terms of shooting guns. But now in terms of utility, it, they still are able to save so much right now with this composition. Uh, so you have to, if you're going to try to play default round for TG, you still have to up the tempo a bit so that you don't, are not forced in these situations. Oh, wow. This will already catches one, and now all four members are there. The Glazers got flashed up too, so M80 pick up more kills. It's another multi-kill out of Xander too. The Glazers are weak at a much lower buy, obviously. They're just hoping to do as much damage as possible, maybe pick up a rifle. Zachary doesn't even have time to reload it. And M80 on a roll. Yeah. <laughs> There's just so much value out of this outlaw, and even that previous round where Koala knew uh, got picked by Zachary. He actually did a contact shot for a 140 damage where Zachary only had 10 HP remaining. So the impact that Koala Noob currently has on playing these outlaws in the early rounds is so good on how they're snowballing the economy and the rounds in their favor. This is already forcing out an early timeout for the Glazers. They need an important swing round here because they have a great opportunity so far where they could do an objective to grab an orb and get an ult right away. And you don't have that many on the side of M80, despite the amount of rounds that we have. So the kill distribution is actually still evened out around M80 so far. And probably the best ult or the closest that you have in an ult is probably what uh, from the shadows, which is not going to do too much there for M80 side. So I, I think right now they, they have an opportunity to go for that objective to, to get an ult uh, into one of these players that they could get value into site control, right? Because as we talk about how mm -hmm. good they are on pulse plans for M80, their retake percentage is still high, but not the best, right? It's not it's not perfect at that point. So we str we need to get them on these sites. Well, Zachary's going to help them find out because he's got like a cypher hat on. 
That's true. He's just got to throw it out. Just neural theft them. That's just all break his monitor. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking, okay. I was thinking it was very safari, but I'm like, oh yeah, cipher hat, bald buff. <laughs> He's anything but that. But yeah, that's an early, a really good early timeout because we had already said the Glazers have to have a big dent into M80's defense if they want to have a shot mm. this map because we've talked about the M80 offensive stats and the Glazers slowly make their way to B. So so look at that, right? They put the conditioning wall too and they block themselves from getting control on the orb on B side. Yeah, at least they get an entry. But on the A side, we already have an ult picked up by Nismo. There was no contention there. There was no snake bite, shock dart to actually get him off the orb. So this ready. is a great piece of util for a retake for M80. Despite them losing a player here. Also, uh, Zachary lurking at A. Just wondering if all the action is at B, could they even get the upper hand making their way to the back? But oh, anyway, the Glazers now have yellow box control can just start establishing some smokes and some real estate to feel comfortable in. Ooh. Zachary just may catch Xander, who's at the very back of the site, and at least proxy some, some KJ Util, and that gets Xander the upper hand, so the Glazers don't have A as a good backup plan. They'll try it anyway. And this is just, like, good information that Nismo's grabbing, right? He threw a knife towards seconds. Yellow. It didn't, it didn't catch anybody, maybe only one player, so they knew there was some sort of a pivot and lurked towards the A side, allowing Zachary to get picked off here by uh, the Viper by Xander. So that forces now TG to work back towards the B site, where the ult came out from Nismo. So there's no Util moving forward on the post plan for TG. <laughs> Shooting through the smoke. Koala <laughs> ah, That's frustrating. But the spike is still planted. And this smoke gets brought back on their feet. So number advantage for the defense. The Glazers just have to protect this spike. But now there's a swing out of M80. The trades are there. The Glazers chomping down on their targets. But it's three for Xander. Who's just having an incredible performance. And thankfully didn't choke when I was hyping him up. But the spike will be given to Xander to get them closer to the pit. Yeah, unfortunately, if anything, the it's not necessarily a choke, but the the off shot there from Drone, and that's really unpre uh, unprecedented usually for a player like Drone to to not be able to connect that shot uh, against a player like Xander when he's actually not even looking at the right spot. That really could have given a chance for TG to get their second round on the board. And now that actually doesn't allow for them to get too many guns this time around. So hopefully they'll they'll have a game plan around these ults too. And it seems to just try to do the default stuff. we got an orb being set up here by Ange on that middle. So he's going to throw the, the poison orb in the middle. So they have default rotates they could do. So they're still working out towards these extremities. For M80, they're going to walk down with, guess what, another Ooh. outlaw. Koala said, who's here? Toxins, Nobody. Because the Glazers are playing at spawn. Playing a little scared. Just seeing if M80 will force the issue. Koala will spot the toes out of that sofa. And now everyone's spraying through that corridor and... The outlaw will be preserved. The Glazers think, okay, maybe it's the moment where we can go to A without a paranoia, throw the lockdown up, and the Glazers could feel comfortable going up. Yeah, it didn't cover the whole site. And the no, Glazers, this is, this is tough. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I made you're at the back, and they're going to be re entering even through the smoke altogether, throwing the flash out. The Glazers now through the pit as a secondary option to protect themselves during the plant. And M80 got to figure their way around it. Nowhere I mean, they're, they're being forced out a bit. They're thinking it's some sort of a fake or they're just going to wait to do a last retake here on the site. There's 30 seconds left. They're still waiting. Oh, no, they dropped the spike. Xander <laughs> in the corner. Oh, jeez. Another multi-kill. I think that makes him 14 and 1 at the moment. Two versus three. It's not impossible for the Glazers. Just need, needing to play off of the pit. Ange has to preserve their life and precision is like that's all you buddy up one hp trying to do their best nitro it's using the rope to go behind the pit but will he enter it yeah it gets one down to one remaining. and precision finishes off the job and this pit has been a so nuisance for m80 to deal with but one versus two and this will locks on to one the pit is down and only this 
Osmo emerges. He was only at one HP to play against Precision after getting that kill, but unfortunately, the pit coming down will also block the vision of what Precision would have. What a nice little flick by Nismo to win that one versus two clutch, the zippo clutch that came through off an unlucky drop where Nitro doesn't clear his left side, giving chances for TG to win that map or win that round. Now, I was trying to say earlier on that that they were trying to throw a fragment there from Nismo to break that lockdown because you looked at it from the minimap. But I love for TG, they jumped on the top of pipes to actually get that lockdown in, which allows that whole site to get covered for them to move in for that plant. So that, that was actually quite nice in terms of um, little changes how TG is trying to use those ults to their advantage to inside the site. But overall there, there is that deniability I want to see. The shock dart molly combo, they try to get them off the orb trying to remove the value that Nismo is currently getting on this KO. The Glazers just seeing... Poison's off. At least using their ears, their eyes and ears at A, and see what is up. Can they catch them rotating through mid? But speaking of mid, and making their way through this whole way, and it gets the rifle. You just can't win that. That's tough, but trying to be creative, trying to find a different route that M80 are not holding. And that's the, the issue the Glazers had on trying to defend the B site once they planted. Yeah. Is that they, M80 have all these different types of angles, high and low, but the Glazers, it's three for precision to salvage this round in a two versus two. And Zachary made it towards the spawn, so they know the A site's open. I love that he's booking in around this area, and Zachary's trying to push forward to break these rotates. What nice shots from precision here. But he's forcing out a drone to make sure that they clear middle because they don't have a smoke to cross. So that's a little bit of time lost here when they're going to try to move inside the A site for a plant. Well, they're just right next to each other. Oh, and Zachary's going to catch him. Oh, Wait, he's right going to check this corner, but didn't check it hard enough. There's and that leaves area. Koala Noob all by themselves with a teleport. But knowing that Zachary's all the way back there and who knows where he is now, this is a tough task for Koala Nu. He won. Interesting smoke. One enemy remaining. He won. Oh. Oh. Wait, Zachary's so waking his way back. Koala Noob just has to have the lineup, but is Zachary gonna come from the top site or from the left? Koala Noob is ready to smoke it and fake a teleport. Zachary just has to listen for the spike. Time not on Koala Noob's side. Fakes the rope. Zachary is so stoic. He has not shown himself yet. But the smoke onto the spike. Oh, the KJ Utel is going to force Koala Noob back. And Zachary could just sit back and watch as Koala Noob does not have a chance. Oh my god, that is so smart by Zachary. And Koala Noob just kind of like over it at that point. Because that kill, yes, even though BCJ got picked off by Zachary, he calls it that Zachary is just staying anchored up towards that spot and spawn. So as you get the backstab, like you, you called it, it was an interesting smoke that he threw there on the top of pipes because he wanted to make sure and give a guess that he's actually rotating from screens so that Precision could be like, oh crap, he, he's just going to be playing from screens. Let me watch towards that area. That allows for him to get that backstab kill that you just saw right there. But after that time's been wasted, he doesn't know where the rotate came from and where Zachary could be and now it's just a full mind game where we talk about the experience of Zachary is going to shine and he actually allowed here TG to get the second round. Very nicely done. This is a round now that you can start popping towards this B site with an ult command but there's a lot of players here from M80. And a thrifty round two and oh I don't know if they expect Riku to be here. He dodged a paranoia sort of and Thrash gets thrown into the Glazer's face and Riku That's still actually dropped from the high ground. And the Glazers, and they're able to throw Util back in M80's face, and Riku just shows the elbow, Nismo picks it up, can't win against the drone. It's just a bloodbath trying to get to the B site, but at least the spike will be recovered by Zachary. The pop flash with a thrash was everything there from M80 to get to. But these lurks are so potent right now from DG. This is the second time that they're getting value out of this and a winnable condition here. BCJ is going to be caught lacking, and Ange can't get the second. Nitro, fantastic trade. It's a Killjoy showdown between two vets. Can M80 30 seconds left. keep increasing their lead? You hear the plant going down. See the KJ util taking care of the bot. Now Nitro has their position revealed, of course, putting the shots down. Zachary 
has been so composed in these 1v1 situations like he was in the previous round. Has to just play his time, put initial damage into Nitro, and can play this dance. Zachary can play this dance all night long. Time is on his side. Hides behind yellow box, and he's just playing like a scaredy cat, and Nitro is the one that has to go fishing. Will tap the spike and couldn't bring out his gun fast enough. Zachary clutches again. The second time here that he has to play mind games on a 1v1, and this time against an even more experienced FPS player as Nitro. Under the helm of Happy on top of that, star-studded and decorated in terms of leadership that you have for M80, and he stays calm in that 1v1 to win against Nitro. And you you mentioned it, it was two vets, but they're actually two just Valorant players. There's no veterinarians in here. <laughs> you sick dogs. <laughs> <laughs> they they do got that dog in them. They do got that dog in them. Nah, but all right, let, let's 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 refocus up though. This this was an important <laughs> round for TG to win. A great opportunity for them to bring this back in a game where it looked very one sided. Now it's only three points that secures them. And look at that push through that smoke. They're not afraid of playing against the one ways and the pipe smokes on the defense. Oh, but the shots out of Xander and the smoke. The Glazers get a hose down. You thought they brought the fire, but they have been doused. And Zachary. The 1v1 clutches were possible before, but against an op, that is a tough one. The Glazers cannot ram their way through A. Yeah, that's that's a huge stoppage in play there from M80 at that point. And really, this is this is a second time. Maybe no, I'd like to say it's like the fourth time that the reads have been perfect. Look at the amount of players are actually there when you finally have a hit coming through from TG. Right? A couple of rounds ago, it was that thrash and flash with three players at yellow when you had most of the players of TG at that point. That dizzy that they threw inside pipes when they had uh, Zachary or Ange lurk towards the mid pipes. And this time on that A side hit, the reads have been perfect so far from Nitro. It just really comes down and boils down to how Zachary is so good and he's 1v1s and he's the winning condition pretty much at this point for TG. Well, Qualanoob did the thing where they're peeking at mid with the op and got brought down to literally one HP. Conserve the gun. Goes back to Snowman as the Glazers want to march their way to the B site, forcing M80 back. But Qualanoob, he's like, I'm one HP. I might as well make some work, make some magic happen at the yellow box with a paranoia or even smoke. Slow down this push out of the Glazers. And I love this hero op that you have now from Zachary. I don't think it's, I think it's been shot already because Zachary's reloading his, uh, his clip. So they, they know that there's an op coming through. They just don't know where it's currently being posted up. And now with that one HP from Koala Noob, he's the one that's actually not afraid to recontest this moment. And he's actually playing it towards yellow. But uh, really it's, such a passive slow play this time around from TG. They're not trying to watch that mid cross because you have this lurk from Ange. He's got a share of timing, but he just got hit by a knife. So they know he's lurking somewhere close. And Xander has all the advantages to lose it. Oh! Oh! 30 seconds left. The French angel on the Glazer's <laughs> side. Yeah, we're teaching you some French here today. Ange. Well, we're not going to say it that way. It sounds a little. Oh, why Ange did tellement bon. Ah! Oh, dear. <laughs> or kill Joy. Watch out! What? We have the high ground, Anakin, drone. You get the log and that's the deal nice. with the gecko flash. Amazing push by M80. Yeah. And the lockdown. And the shots. And the op. No oh, but that is an op too. Better watch out. And low man will not be able to defuse so the glazers just have to hold on a little bit longer this time zachary gets help maybe he doesn't even need it second up but nitro is sticking it the, sh the bullets are raining down but nitro gets the defuse oh that is that Last is so unlucky but that was a beautiful Hunter's Fury 2 to deny the defuse, right? They didn't want to play against the lockdown because you already had two players playing out towards the belt. And he gets a ping on the first, no kills, unfortunately, and not getting out of kill ends up a full stick by Nitro. Pros don't fake at that point. I almost think that I don't know what the hell's happening to his head there. Does he does he have does he have ESP on or something? I don't know. But anyways, the, he him tapping on the spike maybe was masked by the op shot that came out from Zachary that, that got that kill onto Koala New. But man, that was a gutsy play that ends up being like I mean you had no other choice. Yeah, you, you couldn't do anything else. And you, when you think you just can't get any unluckier, TG just loses to a full stick. 
somersault, pit it up, and a forward pit too. So not something that the Glazers want to explore, especially with the cover that M80 could use at that point. So the Glazers very quietly make their way to A and also keep their eyes on that kitchen hallway because M80 like to peek there sometimes. But the Glazers, they've really struggled at getting the picks they needed to establish themselves at an A. I think they've only been successful at piercing through A maybe once or twice. But the Glazers are just being very slow and O across the rope. BCJ didn't even hear Anja at that moment. M80 just holding on as long as they can. And Nismo suppresses the area. The Glazers, their hand is being forced. And the kills all go the way of the Glazers, forcing Nismo down for the moment. It's up to Xander and Nitro, but they're nowhere near. No. Everything is in a favor of TG right now. They're using even the ult for uh, Pulse Plant, so that's the huge win button there. In range of turret to watch flank. Precision once again owning it up on the entries with the rest of TG. This is going to be a very much difficult task now for Xander and Nitro. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, Riku peeks. Uh, no. Nitro in the corner. Oh, man. This is tough. All up to Xander. He's been clutched before. His presence has oh. been detected. And Precision is 1 HP around the corner. Taps the spike, gets Precision's attention. 40 HP for Xander. The Shock Bolt will push him off, and it's four for Precision. Everything has been around Precision once again in the last two rounds. So that is so nice how he's been playing. And unfortunately, like I said, they, they got a full stick against them. But him getting a 4K in that round not only shows how good he is still in terms of fragging, but the amount of util that came through. Following the, the recon art off the pop flash, be able to get the wall bang kill, and then finally using even the L drone to not allow Xander to move in or whoever was in that one versus two to not get uh, a diffuse at halfway. That was very, very nice. So a very sal salvageable round uh, or a round that was salvaged here rather by TG to keep the game semi close in that half. Uh, but we talked about it, right? How M80 could be very quick and destructive around Nismo's utility as a KO. How can TG stop this? And it starts off with a lot of stall util setup on this B site. And that's where M80 is leaning towards too, but more on mid control where there's nobody there. So you're trying to be a little bit more reactive with the turret that's being placed by Zachary inside the uh, sh um, inside kitchen. And if that gets activated, I wouldn't be surprised if you see a triple push from TG, but it just got spotted by a turret placed up by Nitro. M80 look decisive they threw a gecko flash at b to kind of shake up the presence there and then they have nitro feeling out what's happening at a now m80 have decided a is gonna be the spot and drone ah oh, he's already spotted this he's gonna fall back or at least attempt to but the party has already come to him and nismo having to deal with some decay doesn't matter drone was not able to escape defenders being removed but reinforcements here for the glazers including a flank out of riku going up against nitro easy lineup okay took a few shots but nitro got the job done no more lurkers from the glazers and they will all have to coalesce through the same door actually on the high ground there is precision but now with the viper wall up m80 have a lot of protection and can hide behind this time on m80 side One and he got a little man running around causing a ruckus and m80 it's not been an easy round for them but they'll still come out on top and you you definitely see there from m80 at least on that pistol round the the composition that they're running despite you're seeing what you're currently seeing is not a composition at least for that pistol to play or how flexible it is rather you don't really necessarily need that pulse plant util that they're currently using you're using that to create space and then they have flashes to delay so you're playing closer to sight when the viper wall comes up you see that paranoia that came through a pop flash on the right side with a wingman and then you're running behind that fight at the same time. That was beautifully done here by M80, where TG never really had a chance to, to play that retake in the end. So that was that was really nice. And I, I love that small pivot, too. When that turret got shot down onto Nitro on that A site, he ran back thinking that, you know, they're going to rotate towards B, and instead they had three guys just walk up contact towards A after. And it was overthought by TG. And this time they're not overthinking it. Assertive on four players pushing out towards A main. Unfortunately, it's a wrong read to try to get the surprise attack contact against M80. Nitro might die, but at least for the rest, they'll be able to plant here towards this B site. Oh, Nitro. See if they can at least take one of them with them. 
but Ange has made their way over to B. Not sure if they've heard anything yeah. yet. A nitro might be smelling some cooks in that kitchen. At least dodges the flash, yeah. spots the peek out of drone, and Nitro's in a good He's position going. to maybe take one and disengage into the doorway if he's lucky. Ah. Plant is going down for M80. Nitro not only gets one, but gets two! My buddy. A great dance from the cover as the Glazers have returned back to their spawn, and at the mid-cut is Riku, but with a shorty, good luck. Yeah, that's unlucky. I mean, you... you... You don't know what's happening on the other side of that wall, right? When you're pushing so many players out. And then the more you waited, the more it gave Nitro a great position and just ADS down with the Bulldog. So that was just unlucky. You have a shorty. You can't really can't. You really can't support rather where the with the rest of TG out towards the A side push. So you're leaving even lesser numbers on that double swing out towards a main. And this guarantees pretty much the round. And you're actually not allowing M80 to try to get any any kills because I mean, look at BCJ. He was hunting for, for these kills the whole time, trying to get one and die and get a thrash in the next round for their bonus. And you, I mean, he died to Spike, which is great. At least there's some silver lining there for TG, but even better that you're not allowing the thrash to come out early in the bonus round of M80 is everything for them to try to come back this second half. Uh, because I mean, they're trolling behind by six. <laughs> you need to, you need to start stepping up right now here in your gun round. And BCJ is two away from thrash and They've had some cool combos with the pop flash and that, and M80 a few more rounds away okay. from having great. a decisive win on Icebox. And so far, flawless on their offense. It's only been two rounds. M80 will search around, and they will be able to push up a little bit thanks to the smoke, but deciding with all the can't util being thrown. Uh, yeah, can't do it. I agree. <laughs> Well, at least that's uh, going to slow down M80 as they were still trying to pivot around the map, trying to see where we want to go. And as they're moving around and using Util at this point, uh, especially with the, fr uh, the shredded step from Kuala Noob, they really didn't get too much information of how TG is currently playing the site. So they're walking into three players still in, well, a little bit more reactive at this point. Now the first one got contacted, last second one on the screens, and you're trying to delay. Riku's doing their best, throwing out Paranoia's left hook, right hook. Oh, if you're going to shoot through the smoke, at least M80 revealed a position, but the Glazers have their backs against the wall. M80 maybe set up their Viper on the high ground, and M80 going to play the mind games, but pushed up on B site is Ange, and here's the stomping. And can they at least get one for their troubles? They will. Will they even be able to escape? Oh, man, now they're all stunned off. <laughs> Not ideal for Ange, but an opening that M80 can work with. And that's a weapon upgrade. So they get a Vandal out of this. The opening was trying to get that Lurk. That was a win con for them to rotate back. Now with 20 seconds left, you have no choice but to move towards B. And they have oh, Nano Swarms and everything to delay. This is really good here by Zachary. Hey, Drone just has to wait for their moment. Oh, and there no. is the peak. And kind of a mistiming, but M80 have a few more seconds to plant. Two versus two. It's Koala Noob will reload, has Nitro at half health, but uh, I guess half health, uh, more like quarter health. Very, very low. The Glazers have a Recon Bolt. Riku going to play close. Let's deal with the turret first. Recon, yep. Spotting. Someone could be at Yellow Box and use the Recon Bolt to reveal that. And Koala Noob teleports out. It's a good job to not be stuck in that moment. Last but man, M80 are giving standing. up so much space. The Diffuse, though, was only faked. It's a one versus two, four position. Nitro is low, turns onto the second, but knows that has to go for the Diffuse or they will run out of time. And Koala doesn't have the lineup. Wave cool. Precision can get away with this. The Glazers! Zeppo Clutch! Oh, Precision doing what Nitro did to them on the first half, just sticking the Diffuse on a 1v1. And that smoke was everything to, to allow the Diffuse to happen. And I almost feel that it was, wasn't it an attacker smoke? It was, it was placed in a way that it almost felt like if you're on the outside of the smoke, you'd actually get, yeah, get the spray, but it really gave an advantage Time there out. for that Diffuse to come through from Precision. No, it had to be Riku. It had to be Riku at that point. But nonetheless, know, yeah. the, the, the fact that you had instant <laughs> trades that came out from M80 at that B site when you had great position on the crossfire setup from the defenders, that was the crazy part that still gave M80 a chance to win. And finally, the numbers of the post plant opportunities from M80 is not perfect anymore off that round of a full stick. 
is twice though the diffuses have been stuck and gotten away with just because the bullets are just like going right past their head Zachary versus Xander for kitchen control and it's a first kill for the Glazers now just a default defensive setup but making their way to the kitchen to Xander giving them a different option Huge. to be in Zachary's timing and he's so quick to execute. Yeah. It's a good advantage for the Glazers. Nice little My turret peek. Ready. One of the nice little tanks that you could do here on a Killjoy. They did a great job to, to lock down here towards this kitchen because, you know, they have an outlaw working towards the belt. They weren't getting pressure. They have two players playing towards the yellow side. So they have a good 2-1-2 two -two setup here from the Glazers, which now puts Emini in a position where they're going to save for the next round. 30 Try seconds to left. leverage this thrash, this lockdown for the next. Nismo will still be able to buy. So keeping these guns, I mean, dropping another one here is going to make it a lot more difficult for Emini in the next round. The Glazers at least are finding a little bit of room to breathe and, and understanding a little bit more M80s pathing around how they're working the map it seems as though they're defaulting very slowly left. very similarly to how tg's playing but again that's uh no they, they, they're starting to lose beat. guns here makes the next round oh, a little bit more difficult bodies yeah and losing hope at that point but i mean enough work has been done in that first half that and maybe you definitely have some wiggle room they have a cushion but i love to see the glazers play this close to m80 on on their favorite map yeah and as I mentioned before, this this is a, a great opportunity now that uh, they're understanding very similar how they're currently playing too, right? Because if you're looking at the comps, it's fairly similar. The only difference is the initiator that you're currently using, although having very similar values in the end, like the recon dart and aljone is very similar to a dizzy 10 second refresh and another dizzy. But the double controller makes them run the map a little bit more slowly, except this time around. I love that we have a TP moving forward. This is very similar to like a Sage Wall Boost Jump or a Jet Dash Forward where Riku could catch Nitro and the jig is up. That was that was unfortunate timing there from uh, that, that disadvantages the, 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 the Glazers to get a early player advantage. Yeah, Nitro almost caught those hands, but they all managed to get out. Glazers not punished, but M80 establishing, establishing themselves on B, but there's Util on the ground. There's Glazers around the corner, but M80 peek and get the picks. You got a plant. M80 can focus on looking forward, but at the mid cut is the Glazers and now you have a lockdown, which will solidify the area for M80. This almost feels like a, a happy kind of thing with his experience from CS. It's just like, hey, let's just run through our teammates' mollies and just fight through with that and or sitting in mollies to try to win fights. So you see how uh, just Nesmo running through BCJ's mosh, knowing that the area is going to be clear no matter what, because in Valorant, you're just trying to jump away if you're on the receiving end of things. And it allows for him to get an opening, catching players off guard, and even being able to play a pulse plan off a of lockdown and even guaranteeing the round when you have a thrash on the pulse plan. You already see TG falling back here towards the A side. It's their turns to try to keep these three guns alive. And then maybe he's already trying to hunt it down. It's not going to happen. You'll still save these three rifles in the next round now for the Glazers. But man, that was that was really nice. The first time that we're actually seeing aggression behind utility on the attack of M80, that now the Glazers have to add that into winning conditions on how they can bring this back. Be ready now for how M80 can run through their teammates util and, and still capitalize on kills. And maybe B site could be what's hit by M80 when they got the thrash, they got the pop flash from Nismo. It's they got a lot of tools and they've been successful at rounding that corner. And that seems to be the idea, at least for now. Who could be up against them is both controllers. Anjin and Riku going to do their best. Uh, kind of a misflash when this. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, TG were very far back anyway. <laughs> and now you know the op is there, so watch out, M80. Yeah, already uh, they're watching uh, out for sure. They're backpedaling towards the A site, but that's where Zachary's util is currently set up. They don't really know where this KJ is being set up yet. Is it in kitchen? Is it towards A site? They know at least B site is not. And that's unlucky timing for precision. A nice little shot by Koala Noob and that opens things up. Knowing that it's a, a, a Sova that's jump spotting towards boiler. They know the KJ is on this A site, so they'll move up and try to clear the util early at the minute mark. Yep, Thrash being used by BCJ, M80 taking full control of the site. Zachary gets set up at the top. If he could just get one pick, he could get the lockdown. He could turn the tides up this round. But M80 have already planted, so 
One objective down. They're gonna play back. And it's really uh, TG that have to make a move, but this flanker of Ange can make a really big splash if the timing is right. So TG have made their way forward, and Ange wins on the flank, so Ange can progress as M80 getting pitched from both sides, and this is a pain sandwich. The spike has been defeated, is being tapped, and M80 trying to prevent it. It's three for Zachary. Oof. And TG keep themselves alive. Zachary getting the first kill on the execution from M80 towards this A site and gets the last two also activating lockdown online, uh, making it online for uh, any further rounds that they want to use it. But they had for M80, they had to win that flank watch uh, out towards A main because, you know, no matter what, that BCJ had to use a thrash because they already used it on towards the opening in the A site. So they understood here at this point that you're going to stay behind. You're going to try to protect your thrash uh, for MM80 at that point. They went for a tap on, on the spike and at the same time went for a util clear towards the pris uh, prison, towards jail and towards right side orb, which is really, really nicely done there uh, on that retake play for the Glazers. And that, this is what we've been talking about, right? It's despite the Glazers being 0-2 so far in this split, they still have great chemistry and they're still taking this very seriously to the point that it gets very competitive against even top tier teams like m80 and if you're just a scoreboard steven that's watching oh <laughs> m80 is currently four and oh so far in terms of maps they have been haven't been winning them easily here for uh m80 right and, and mm -hmm. the last thing is They've actually just now lost another pulse plant situation where people have been praising that Icebox is their best map. And also now we've seen two diffuses coming through from TG on the defensive side. So it shows now that the work's been put up, that they're figuring out how M80 is playing the pulse plant and they're able to counter that. So M80 calls a timeout because now they finally have to readjust the game plan that's been working for them for the past X amount of times they've been playing Icebox. And this is the furthest M80 has been pushed on this map. They, they've usually win 13 to 6 is like the quote both, worst yeah. score line. Yeah. yeah. So the Glazers, the team at the bottom of the standings, is doing better than SAD and TSM when it comes to M80 on this map. The Glazers looking to upset them. Still trailing by quite a few rounds. We're going to play around this corner of B as M80 will at least get the orb and decide to rethink this. Yeah, and right now it's... Zachary replacing his util once again, playing close to where he could run a lockdown and use this pit. I was going to say on a post plan, if anything, but they're going to use that early to clear that out. So Ange is pretty much going to be in like a one and done situation inside this pit and forcing the players towards Zachary. This could be a great advantage for M80 if they choose to flood towards this side. And that's why you have, oh, that knife that was everything. Hey, Zachary's position is revealed. Here's the players on the other side, has a gecko flower, a gecko blind, and of course a turret. And Zachary gets overwhelmed in M80. Take a foothold onto the site, and Sander even clears the rotators from B. So M80 are in a fantastic position, five versus three. The job is not done. The Glazers try to retake, but they just get shredded down to one member precision. Who just had what three or four kills in another round? He could clutch, but his position is revealed. And as Nispo is gonna peek him, he's just trying to wall bang through. You gotta and save precision. Now. Yeah, just decides to save, but I don't think he'll be able to. Quality was jumping towards them. Nispo is around the corner. He can hide, he can run, but for how long? Next time, mind the head. Not long Not enough. enough. Not like three seconds, enough. four? <laughs> <laughs> map, map point right now for map M80, point. and that kill allowing Nismo to get that pick to get one close to the null command. But let's talk about that round on an A site hit, right? That pit came down, and I was I was trying to mention it. Like, this is actually quite good for M80 for them to flood towards this area at screens, at map, to fight against um, 
Zachary that was out towards screens. That's why that Nano Swarm alarm bot was going to be super important because you would vulnerable some players. You would uh, you would hit them with the ticks off the molly and you're hoping to swing to get at least two or three. But that knife canceled everything. So the alarm bot doesn't do any vulnerability. And then after the Nano Swarm, you just flash above it and now you're flooding in Zachary and you kept the two players inside the eight pit. So you just plan it around there with the wingman. You just let them sit in that area. Koala Nu just kills everybody that rotates towards that B site. And when it's too little too late for the guys inside the pit to fight back because you have just too many players inside the A site for M80. And there's nobody there to get information of to where M80 is being placed. So I love that play in the end from M80 to adapt off. And what I, I'd like to say, an unfortunate pit that was too preemptive. I, I felt it could have been good for a retake off a lockdown uh, uh, with a plant coming through from M80. At least they have a lockdown to work with, though, for TG in this round, so they could do that retake style that we just mentioned. But um, that that cost them dearly here, because now M80 has five chances to close the map. And M80 did well off of the timeout, forcing the Glazers to have to rethink. Yeah, we need to demand perfection out of the Glazers just to be able to come back in this map to shake up those M80 stats. And this is an interesting rotation out of M80 to come through the bottom of Kitchen, through this mid cut, and see if they can come around the Glazers who like to play forward off that yellow box. Now you have Wingman that's maybe gonna force the defender back, but who expected z this? Zachary couldn't turn in time, and M80 collapsed onto the B site defenders, and the Hunter's Fury comes from mid by precision. But I'm not sure it really found much. So M80 comfortable to get the spike planted, but uh, now that they lost their forward member, now not feeling so confident. They're just waiting for the next cycle of fuel. Like you, you just saw, the wall just came down. They're waiting for the next cycle to come up. Then they can wall up and get the um, the Viper's Pit out for a plant. So there it is. The wall's coming up. And they're slowly starting to scale up, but on the other end, though, losing Zachary with the Glazers, that's the ult that could have been so important to counter the pit. And now all the chances are in favor of M80 to close it out. <laughs> Wait, does he get out? Oh my god, the teleport. He still got the up and he still got it, but the spike has been planted for M80. Three versus three. This is for the map. The Glazers have to deal with a pit from Xander. So annoying. Just hoping to spray through it, but there is some cover that M80 can use. Nitro is on the other side. Of this box drone is a big engagement caught this killjoy dancing around can now take shelter in the pit and this time is not on the glazer side but nitro gets to m80 take the final round and get icebox and nitro gets three kills out of that in the end you saw that piece of util off that pit there was so much coming out from the defensive side that had a lot of things in their favor to really try to punish nitro and when when Nitro got was jiggling, got spotted. You saw that flash that came out from out from inside the pit, out from Nismo. So Nismo once again being a silent hero right now for M80 on that post plant to allow for them to convert and keep at least a percentage high at above 90% in terms of the uh, post plant wins that you have from M80. A very tough map for Glazers to try to upset against M80 on their best map. But I love the fact that they made it a lot more close and, and M80, once again, they had to call a timeout and fight for that victory in the end. And that means M80 are still flawless. Not only on Icebox, but forever and ever. Flawless but the Glazers, victory. Flawless victory. But the Glazers <laughs> really made them sweat for it. But at least the Glazers can try to depend on this next map split which has been their choice can they force that decider and what will the glazers think about during this break well i guess we're gonna find out see you after this
Peace.